Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. I'm going to take a, just a short break away from our Roman study to talk about a subject that confuses a lot of Christians. And it has to do with keeping His commandments. As many of you know, we are not under law, but under grace, and yet we are told to keep His commandments. And so there seems to be some contradiction there with, uh, as, it, as it regards that subject. And I'm, I'm hoping to clear that up for you uh, with just very little difficulty. Let's start by defining terms. Uh, we're going to talk about keep uh, versus do. Now, if you look at the passage and, look, and you look at it carefully, what you're going to discover is, is that it doesn't mean what most Christians tend to think that it means. The word keep is tereo in the Greek. It's from teros. It means to uh, a watch, keep, reserve, observe, uh, to attend to carefully, uh, to take care of. Uh, the word literally means to guard. The word has no relationship whatsoever to the righteousness of God being produced on the human level or walking according to the flesh or living according to law. The word do and the word keep are distinctly separate terms in Scripture. If we look at the word for do, the simple word, D-O, do, the word is poieo. It's where we get the word poet uh, to create. The definition of poieo means to bring forth, commit, cause, work, show, bear, fulfill, perform, to produce, construct, fashion, etc., to acquire, to provide a thing for oneself, to make a thing out of something, to be the author of a thing, to carry it out or to execute it. And so the error, folks, comes about as a result of failure, a simple failure to define terms. We have to concede to what the word means. Keep simply does not mean do. As in, uh, do his commandments. If, if you love me, you'll do my commandments. That's not what the text is saying. It's saying if we love him, we will guard his commandments. If keep meant do, well, then there would be no need for two distinct words. By telling a, a watchdog to guard your property, you're, biblically, you're telling him to keep, that is, guard your property. You'd never tell him to do your property or to create your property. So there's a difference between keeping your word and doing your word. And the Word of God has made it clear what it means to keep our Lord's commandments. The truth, folks, is that we do keep, that is, we guard, we do guard His commandments. And we do so because we love God. So keep is, is the word tereo, meaning to guard. It's an aorist. It sees the action as a whole. And uh, I, I don't want to get into a, a lengthy discussion concerning the, the various uh, aspects of the Greek grammar here. Uh, I, I'm my intention was to try to keep this as simple as possible. But folks, the aorist is, sees the action as a whole. It's like a one-time thing. The, uh, the indicative mood is the mood of certainty in the grammar. Whereas the subjunctive mood is the mood of uncertainty. And then you have an air, you have what we call the first class condition in the Greek. If you have a sentence that begins with if, such as if we keep his commandments, and the keeping his commandments is in the indicative mood, which 
basically says that we definitely will. So it's what it's saying is, is, is it's saying if we keep his commandments and we will, then you have every right. We have every right to translate the word if since because you have if followed by an indicative. I hope that's not too confusing. So the subjunctive is the mood of uncertainty. And so we, we see in the text, we see verses which talk about the uncertainty there. You'll see the subjunctive mood, the uncertainty being related to our remaining in his love, which we may or may not do. Because he's the vine, we're the branches, and all righteousness is of the Lord. And it's the righteousness that's based on faith. The word says that unless we've died to the law, we cannot bear fruit unto God. And you'll, if you look, you'll see that the uh, some of the verses that pertain to our keeping his commandments are in the context of our being the branch and him being the vine. The word do, poieo, is not te reo, keep. He's not saying that if you love me, you might do my commandments. Let's look at John 14, 15. In John 14, 15, we see the mood of certainty, the indicative mood. If you love me, that's agape, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So since you love me, you definitely will keep my commandments. Since, if it's followed by an indicative, a first class condition, as they call it in the Greek, you love me and you definitely do, you will keep, that is guard, my commandments. That's a future active indicative. So the certainty of the grammar in that verse is related to our loving Christ. It's saying, since we love him, we will guard his commandments. If you look at John 14, 21, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, that's not doing them, that's keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be definitely, that there's an indicative, loved by my Father, and I will definitely love him and will definitely manifest myself to him. So we see certainty expressed in that verse. He it is that definitely loveth me, present active indicative. And if we look at John 14, 23, just several verses later, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, now he uses the subjunctive, maybe he will, maybe he will not, he will future indicative, keep my words, that is, guard my words, and my Father will indicative, definitely, love him, and we will indicative, definitely come unto him, and make, indicative, definitely make, our abode with him. Folks, the grammar is important. So are the meaning of these words. It's important that we define terms. So the subjunctive there makes sense. If we love him, and every true child of God does, the only ones who don't are those who are not his, we will guard his commandments. That's what the text is saying. If we look at 1 John 2, 3, and hereby we do, that's, that's a, a, an indicative, definitely, know that we definitely know him if we keep that's subjunctive now, his commandments. Our guarding his commandments assures us that we know him. If we look at 1 Corinthians seven nineteen, we read Paul saying, circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandments of God. The word keeping is the word tereo. It's not Poyeo. It, it wouldn't it wouldn't it would make zero sense to translate that circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing but the doing of the commandments of God. First John four seven Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. 
1 John 4, 7. Therefore, the, the truth, folks, is that we do love God, and therefore we do guard his commandments. That's what the text is saying. So there's no conflict there between law and grace. So those who look at keeping his commandments as doing the law, well, they just simply fail to distinguish between the two words, tereo and poieo, keep and do. Two words with distinctly separate meanings, according to the original language of the Greek text, which which John and Paul and their readers, folks, they would have perfectly understood. Why have you probably, most likely, many of you, why have you not heard this before? Why is it that your pastor is not making that distinction between tereo and poieo? I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to even venture to, to take a guess at, at why that's the case. I'm just, I'm just presenting you folks with the straight truth, simple, straightforward truth concerning the matter. I just don't know how to put it any, any simpler that keep is not do. Do is means one thing and keep means another. Now if if you notice, I'm gonna put up here on the screen this word te reo keep which means to guard, literally means to guard. You see it in the context uh, quite clearly. I'm gonna leave this up on the screen for a moment for you to look at. Look I love you all, I truly do. Keep looking up, I, and I thank you for all of your comments on these videos. I thank you for all of your prayers for this ministry, for all of the, the kind words of encouragement and support. Until next time, thanks for watching.